Okay, so let's start. We have 11 people, that's enough for us. So hello everyone, welcome to WDB second lecture where we will going to be covering over CSS1. Uh, CSS1 is essentially like an introduction to CSS where we will cover all the basic knowledge of CSS. And so first of all, I will go over some logistics. So HTML1 and CSS1 homework are out. And since we don't really like uh, inform you about the release of HTML1, we kind of give you a deadline extension. So now both homework are due on Monday. And I think for the for future, uh, every homework is due like before the next lecture. So yeah, and you can find the homework on Google Drive and I believe you can also find it on Notion. Cool. So today's agenda, uh, we're going to first talk about some uh, very basic CSS, like how CSS functions, the syntax of CSS. Trust me, it's like super simple. And selectors, selectors is just uh, something about CSS that we all use. And we're going to go through some common properties. And at the end, I'm going to give a live coding demo because like, it's definitely better to see how CSS uh, function in real time than like just watching a lecture. So yeah, let's dive right into it. Yeah, so these are kind of like the three pillars of web development or just like simple web development. H uh, so you already learned about HTML, which is uh, very important. It's like the bare bone, the structure of a uh, website. And today we're going to learn a part of CSS, like do a basic introduction of it. So what is CSS? So first actually, let's see. So this is a world without CSS. You can see the website is like, the layout is in a very weird way. And the text is not really like uh, that beautiful. And it's like overall the structure is like very strange. And now this is a, the world with CSS. So essentially like by applying styles onto the website, you can see that the, um, the website now has structures. For example, you can see the nav bar very clearly on top. And you can distinguish, for example, button um, uh, with text. So yes, CSS is very important in designing websites. Cool. So. What is CSS? Essentially like CSS is a way to style all the HTML and make them look nice. You can think of it as a programming language, but it's like, it can't really like do a lot. It's just making things prettier. And you can basically like change all the HTML elements, font, color, site layout, and also animations. And let's look at the basic syntax of CSS. So you already learned about uh, HTML tag uh, on Monday. Uh, essentially, this is a paragraph where it says, I want more styles today. And how do we give this style? So, 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 so essentially, this on the left, the image on the left is a CSS file. And the CSS file here, this is saying that we will select this P element. So the P tag is being selected. And that it will change all the color to violet. And the text decoration is underlined. So essentially, after we apply this style to this text, the thing that will be showing up on the website is going to be a violet text with an underline. So yeah, this is a very, wait. So this is a very bare bone of the CSS basic syntax. So how do we use CSS? Like how do we actually import it before we can like write any of it? So first, the first way to, um, wait. I'm letting people in. Why can't I let people in? Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, cool. I will share my screen again. Cool. So how do we actually um, import CSS into HTML? One way is just to directly write CSS within the HTML. So this is a very familiar uh, H1 tag. So it's a headline tag. And it's saying hello world. And so how do we actually add styles to it? We use the we use a style attribute. So essentially like by adding a style equals and then following it by a CSS string, you can add, you can kind of like inject style into an element. And right, right here, it's saying like style equals color, column blue, and text align, column center. 
So it's essentially letting this uh, H1 element becomes blue and also let the text align with the center. So if it's on a website, the hello world will be like right in the center. So yeah, that's that. And this is one way to uh, write styles into the HTML document. And we actually not use this very often. And this will only style the elements I supply to you. So essentially like by writing style equals blah, 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 blah here, you won't affect any H1 elements elsewhere. And you will, and by, write, by writing style this way, it will overwrite other kind of styles. For example, like we'll introduce two more ways to import styles, and those two ways will be overrided by this uh, inline style attribute. And it's kind of good for elements that do not follow a specific pattern, but I do recommend that you do not use this. So yeah. And this is the second way where you can uh, style an HTML. So it's essentially by using the style tag. So instead of using a style attribute within one HTML element, you use a style tag. And the style tag lo locates in the head um, attribute. So essentially with all the metadata, you can also put styles within it. And you write directly into the HTML document at the very top, essentially like in the head. And this is usually not very preferable for long CSS documents, because like uh, this way, like CSS and HTML were kind of like mixed together. And you don't really want this because like it, it's very hard to manage. But this kind of provides a very quick way to just test some very simple styles uh, out. So yeah, this is the second way where you can import CSS styles. Now let's look at the third way. So third way you can um, import CSS and this is actually the most common way, the most preferable way is to import it using the link. Sorry about the... <laughs> I actually, yeah, I made a mistake. It's not style tag, but it's actually link. And so the link is actually, we use link tag and we, uh, and it's the style sheet. And we use, uh, we add the links through like this. It's kind of like a, like a normal link in the HTML where it's a, a tag. And this is a very organized way to keep track of all the code. So essentially like you write all the CSS in another file and then you link it to this uh, HTML file. And typically you will put the CSS style in a, into a directory called style, and you can like separate different styles uh, into different CSS folder and then import it uh, like through this way. So yeah. Cool, so essentially like these are the three different ways to import CSS. And now let's look at some, uh, let's look deeper into the syntax of CSS. And let's introduce selectors. So selectors is essentially a way to style specific elements within an HTML uh, file. And the selectors are very powerful and sometimes actually kind of tricky tools to use. Here we'll cover some of the most basic and most common ones. And, uh, and to start, the most basic one is called the tag selector. And we already kind of like demonstrated this um, previously. So if you look at the image on the right, it's essentially uh, there are like two styles. One style is for uh, the, uh, the tag P, uh, essentially like paragraph. And one style is for the tag H1, essentially like, like the first level help. And these two styles can be applied like just like that. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. So essentially it's a tag and the tag is a selector here. Well, first of all, the tag means, the P tag means we'll select all the P all the paragraph within an HTML document and we'll provide it with color red. And how do we write, write this out? It's essentially like in the curly bracket, we have color, this is the attribute and column and the value after the attribute, which is red. And then you separate the basically different attribute uh, with a semicolon, so yeah. Uh, H1 and Below here is H1, it's actually, it's actually the same. So the, here is saying the font size should be uh, 10 EM and we'll cover EM and pixel uh, layer, but it's essentially saying, it's essentially like a way to define how large a text should be. And we uh, here we define like the color to be this. This is kind of like a grayish color. So yeah, this is the most basic HTML elements. Cool. Actually, up till this point, are there any questions? Feel free just like unmute yourself and 
say it. I'll wait for it. Dude. Cool. Okay. If there are any, if there are any questions, let's move on. So now the question becomes how to distinguish between two paragraph tags. Because like if we look at the text selector, the text selector act if you use P uh, if you use for example this selector, it will select all the paragraph within an HTML document. However, if I, we want to only like select part of it, what do we use? We use uh, something called classes. And classes are essentially like what follows the class attributes in an HTML element. So essentially, this is a diff element, and we can uh, distinguish it from other diff element by using the class attribute. And the class attribute is essentially like class equals and then a string, string uh, and, and then a followed by a string. And the string is essentially the class name of this, uh, of this HTML element. As you can see, like this two div are, with, uh, are basically like with different classes. So it will be distinguished by different class name. And how do we actually select uh, these two classes? We do it this way. We can select a specific class and give it styles like this, like the image on the um, bottom right. So essentially, uh, instead of just saying team photos, we put a dot uh, before it. So it's essentially dot team photos dot class name, and then we can basically select uh, one class. And by using this, we'll select the class called team photos and not the member row. So yeah. And by, by using this class, we can actually like, uh, first of all, we can reuse our code very easily. For example, if two paragraphs are both like six, uh, for example, descriptions, then we can create a class called descriptions and then use dot descriptions to give them styles uh, like at once. We don't need to like write code twice. Uh, we can also like help distinguish between uh, different classes. Say if, you, there's a, say if there's like a description class and you also want uh, a title class and then the title class can be named title. The description class can be named description. So it can be separated pretty easily. So this is class. And there are also a thing called ID. And ID is actually just another form of selector. And they are also actually higher importance than classes. And IDs are usually for elements that appears only once. For example, if uh, there's like an um, introduction of different team member within SpaceX, and Elon Musk needs some like, special treatment for their um, description uh, box, boxes. So we can create an ID called Elon Musk description. And essentially, we can select the Elon Musk description by adding a hashtag for, before it. And this way, we'll only select the ID um, uh, called Elon Musk description. And ID is actually very similar to classes, but we only, we, we like normally we, uh, we apply this ID for elements that appears only once or just like something very specific. Uh, ID will only affect the style of HTML elements with the selected IDs, kind of similar to classes. Well, it will not influence like other uh, classes or other IDs. So yeah, cool. Are there any questions till now? No, okay, cool. And also there's this thing called universal selector. So what if we want to style everything together? For example, if there's like a very important font, font size or font family that we want to use, how do we like, uh, it's very like, we're, it's very like just annoying to like uh, write P comma H1 comma H2. We don't really want to like st uh, put everything together. So is there any uh, very like, uh, easy way to start everything at once, there is. And this thing is called universal selector. It's essentially a star. And by using this, we'll basically like give all the HTML elements the attributes in the curly bracket. So in this case, it's going to be like colors, red, and the box sizing is going to be border box. It's a, um, a type of HTML element that we will introduce later. So cool. And this is called the grouping selector. So we already have the universal selector. Universal selector actually like selects everything together at once. However, if we only want to select 
uh, some classes, but not the others, what do we do? So essentially we just put them all together by commas. So if we want to give H1, H2, and P uh, all the elements the same styles, we can um, group them together by using this. So it's essentially H1 comma H2 comma P. And within the bracket, we put the CSS content that we want. So yeah, so this should be all very intuitive. And this can reduce cold water and makes it less repetitive. Cool. And there's also a thing called com combinators. So combinators, we're, here we only introduce the most basic one. It's called the descendant selector. So we can first look at this HTML uh, snippet. So in this snippet, we can see that there's like a text box here, uh, in text box class here with this div tag. And within this div tag, we have two P uh, paragraphs. Uh, one of the paragraph is labeled with um, class red. Okay. And if we look at it, if we only want to make the class red within the text box red, we can do this. We can do dot text box. Uh, actually, there should be a dot red, dot red here. I'm sorry. It's a typo. Yeah. So if we can use dot text box and dot red. Essentially, this will select the dot red class within the dot text box. Uh, class. And this will uh, essentially like change the HTML element within here, the color to be red. Okay. And also, uh, any HTML elements will basically inherit the uh, attribute from its parent. So essentially, like we can see uh, the text box here has a uh, attribute of text align center. It means just like uh, the text will be aligned in the center. And because there's a text align center in the parent, uh, um, parent um, tag, the P tag within the parent tag will also be inherited this attribute, text align center. So the some red center text and some center text will all be centered. So yeah, so this is how inherit, inheritance work in uh, CSS. Cool, are there any questions? Yeah. So mm -hmm. what happens if text box, like you set color to blue and then for like red, you set color to like red. So which oh, color yeah. would it take? Yeah, cool. Definitely great question. So actually we'll cover this more in more detail in CSS2, which is the next lecture. But essentially like, um, so essentially the C which CSS style we choose is based on how specific you uh, select the elements to be. So if you say the dot text box, the color is blue, and then dot text box dot red, the color is red. This dot text box dot red is like more specific than dot text box. So for, for example, this text, some red center text, uh, if you select it with dot text box dot red and color red, the, uh, this text will still be red. Cause like this selector is like more specific than the, uh, this selector. This selector is like, too general uh, to like override this lecture. Does that like answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So then, like, some centered text would be like if like we said color was blue in te dot text box, it'd be like blue. Yeah, yeah. Because like it will be inherited from this text box. Um, can you just do like dot red by itself, or do we always need to do like dot text box as well? Oh, actually, in this case, we can only do dot red by itself, and it will actually work as well. So yeah. Okay. So what's the point of like also having dot text box? Uh, for example, if there's like p class equals dot red, and then like the um yeah, say there's a p class equals red, and then like dot red has some other attributes. For example, um, color equals green. And then this um, p equals uh, class equals red will be green. However, the text box, a dot text box dot red, this selector selects uh, that's very specific elements, and that one will be uh, with color red. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that. I mean, I can demo it like later. Yeah. I I also had a question again. So mm -hmm. you talked about inheriting. So if 
Yeah. That text box had color dot dot blue. Mm -hmm. Um, would the inside the red class text still be red, but then the text below would be blue? Is that what it's saying? It's like yeah. as long as it's not specified, it's gonna inherit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. So essentially, like it will inherit all the attribute from the parent if there's like nothing subs uh, specified. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Great questions. Are there any more questions? Okay, let's move on. So, okay, so this is another class that's very interesting. It's called pseudo classes. So pseudo, cl pseudo selectors are used to match a specific state of an element. So think of uh, sometimes when you like hover your mouse over a specific, uh, over some link, and the link will uh, like turn bluish. And this is like the pseudo, pseudo selector that's working. So essentially here, uh, this is like an example of a pseudo selector. So it's saying the dot team photo class, when the mouse is hovering over this class, the opacity of it will become 50%. So this is, so pseudo classes is usually like, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Pseudo class is usually like uh, specifying for like specific state of an element. So there's like hover state, there's also visited state, so if like a link is being visited, you will be like a uh, column visited state and you can define a separate style for that way. And there's also like hover, visited, also focus, and on blur. There are like uh, a lot of like different pseudo classes that you can use. And it's all defined, it's all used to like define specific state of an element. Cool. Are there any questions? Okay. So, yeah, cool. So I think right now, yeah, okay. So we, we, can, we can talk about inheritance again, but essentially like classes will inherit parent class properties. So you can see probably here is a better example. So here, the div class equals parent is the uh, kind of like the parent class within the paragraph uh, for the both of this paragraph and both of this paragraph will actually become red because like both this paragraphs will inherit from the parent classes. However, this span class will not become red, it will become black because like this span class has actually more specific quality um, to the parent class. We'll talk about more like uh, more about like how which um, pro which uh, CSS style will be given more priority later in CSS two? We'll cover this like in depth. So yeah, don't uh, don't worry about that too much right now. So yeah, so essentially like children uh, tag will inherit parent class properties. Cool. Okay. And here are some like uh, very common CSS properties. Uh, so there are color, essentially like by using color, you can like change the color of the text. And there's also background color where you, you can change the background color of something, of an image, of a text. And there's also font size, font weight, font family. I figure like uh, it will be like better if I just like do a, a very quick CSS property demo and you, you all can follow along if you want. So yeah. Okay, let's, cool. I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen and pull up the, um, pull up uh, my coding file. Give me a moment. And in the meantime, feel free to go to your Notion, Notion page or the, on the Slack and download the, like the starter code. And we can code. Uh... Oh wait, actually, I missed the chat. Can you just do dot red by itself? Do we need to do dot text box for it to work? Yeah, we can do dot red by itself. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's share my screen. Chrome. Actually, let's share this. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Can you all see my screen? You should see like a bunch of code, like HTML code and CSS code. Wait, actually, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the reply. I figure I can't see, the, I, I can't actually see the chat when I'm, oh, I can, okay. Yeah, never mind. Cool, okay. So, um, so yeah, let's, so this is essentially like the things that we will be building. Uh, uh, it's, uh, so this is like a kind of like a demo uh, title. Like normally title, title won't be look like that. It's kind of like stupid. But uh, this card is like, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty good. It's essentially like card is a very common uh, web component uh, for any like website. If you look at like Pinterest, it's like built by cards. If you look at Dribbble, it's built by card. There are like lots of uh, web component, all websites that are just like solely based on cards. So yeah, and this actually can be achieved by all the um, CSS styles that we covered today. So yeah, so let's, see how do we actually build this. So we let's comment all the text out. Actually, let, let's comment all the CSS styles out. And it, it actually looked like this. So it's kind of like shitty right now without the styles, but we can apply the styles right now. So let's first actually take a look at the HTML file. The HTML file here uh, includes one, uh, one headline, and there's a very long div here called with a class called card. And this is essentially like the card we just saw. And there's a smaller, a smaller headline, which is H3, and its class is title. And there's a paragraph here and with its class is called description. And there are like some very important text here, like saying some of our tools, blah, 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 blah. This is marked as a very important description ID. So we can do something about this idea later. And there's also a link here to basically like encourage people to learn more about this. Cool, so let's uh, let's get started with styling this HTML page. So I think first of all, we'll try to style this hello CSS uh, title. If we look at our final like uh, result, the hello CSS should be like centered and also with a bluish color. Uh, let's actually trying to do that. So how do we get the uh, first, uh, how do we get the headline? It's essentially like typing H1 and then follow a curly bracket. And this way we can select uh, the H1. And let's give it a color. Uh, let's just use this color because it looks nice. And after we apply the color and click save, we can see that like the color here now turns blue. This is kind of like a very hollow world style CSS, like the most basic CSS you can ever write. And now, right now we can write more to it. So as we can see the uh, text is in the center. So yeah, let's, so let's make it center by using text align center. And notice there's a hyphen between text align. So like most CSS styles, if there are like two words to it, for example, like background color, you can see there's a hyphen to like basically connect uh, those two words. So yeah, this is like a common pattern. So text align center. <coughs> and the hello world will become centered. And so this is that, and it's pretty neat. And however, as we can see, we kind of don't really want this like margin. We kind of want like a larger margin here. And if we notice that actually uh, different elements here have very different margins. So what we can do is actually to apply a zero margin at the start of the file, just to essentially like set everything to be default. And this way, once we apply, for example, a margin here, for example, if we want to give a margin of 10 pixel, we can clearly like see the changes. And uh, also what's margin? Margin is essentially like the thing that, uh, the white spaces around an element. Now uh, you can find out this by clicking inspect 
it's right click inspect. And then if you like click this arrow, if you are on Chrome, then like basically hover upon this uh, H1. And you can see there's like a yellow um, border around the box, very thick border. And th that border is essentially the margin that we are setting. And we are right now setting the margin to be 10 pixel. So you can see like here, underneath it, it says 10. And this is, uh, this is called the inspection tool and it's a very handy tool when we are like developing website. You can see like all the styles, the padding, the border, the margin, we'll go over this in more detail later, but you can see everything uh, very clearly. So yeah, and that's that. And if we look at this, we kind of feel like margin 10 pixel is probably like a little bit too small. Let's increase it to 20 pixel. If we hit refresh, we can see that uh, now the border becomes thicker. So essentially like the margin becomes um, bigger. And here it's also saying that the margin becomes 20. So yeah. Cool, so right now we have the headline. And uh, if we look back at the original, like the final result, uh, here there's like a, it's kind of like all the text is being bounded within a specific width. However, right now the text is just like uh, spanning all the way, uh, like spanning all the widths of the entire website. We don't really want that. So what we can do is to set a, a width on the card, card uh, class. And by setting a width on the card class, the H3, uh, H3 the, uh, the paragraph here, the paragraph here, and also the link here, will all inherit the width from this card. So let's see this in action. So how do we select car, uh, class again? We use the dot selector and dot followed by the class name, dot card. And let's give it a width of like say 500 pixel. If we click slate, uh, if we click save, we can see that the width suddenly get like bounded within this like 500 pixel. We can double check it by using this inspection tool. And sometimes you will find it's like very hard to select specific uh, div element. One thing you can do is also to click on the right side here. There's like div class equals car. You can select basically like the div, in the, like all the div this way. And you can see here on the in the bottom, like there's a box model here. <clears throat> and the width is automatically, I mean, not automatically, but we set it to become 500 pixel. And it's showing that it's 500 pixel. And also a very good thing about inspection tools is that you can change the width actually here. For example, if you want to like just trying to see how a uh, 300 pixel looks like, you can change it to 300 pixel. And the website will uh, essentially like change corresponding to it. And this is like a very, very handy tool. Hey, Smarts. <clears throat> So this is a ver also a very handy tool that we can play around with. Uh, remember this will essentially like the change uh, in the inspection tool will not be saved uh, in the local file. So you can essentially like be brave and do all the changes that you want and change it to 600 pixel, uh, 600 pixel. Maybe it's a little bit too big. So you can change it back to like 500 pixel. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, so right now we have the width. And if we look at the final uh, result, we kind of have like a thin border around it. And there's also like a attribute for that in CSS. It's, and it's called like very straightforward, it's called border. And how to define a border? You can define a border this way. So first of all, you can, um, <clears throat> you can input the width. And here, I, I would say it's around like one pixel or two pixel. So let's do one pixel and then you can do the color. And here we will give it a grayish color. It's like CCC. And then you can choose the style of the um, pixel. Let's put it as solid. You can also be like, you can also choose like dash for like dash border. So yeah. Once we click slave, uh, once we click save, you can see that there's a border right now here around the entire um, uh, box right now. However, 
it's kind of like hard to see the left border. So let's add a margin to it. So I would say the margin, we can add around like, let's say um, 15 pixels. Yeah, cool. So right now we can see the, uh, like the left border more clearly. And if we look back at this, uh, like the final result, we can see that uh, actually like the text are styled very differently. So first of all, they are actually using a very different uh, font. So this font is kind of like, looks very nice. This is just like the default font, which looks not really nice. And we can change that by using um, using the CSS attribute called font family, okay? Uh, actually, we want to select uh, all every text within here. So for the title, the description, and also the link, we want to apply uh, styles on all this, on all those three um, different texts. So what should we do? We can use the uh, combination. Uh, we should, we can use the selectors that we just talked about. It's essentially like by separating everything uh, using comma. So let's do dot title, comma dot description, comma dot link, and this was like the dot comma class, uh, dot title class dot description class, and also the dot link class. And those three classes are separated by comma. And let's use a curly bracket. And then essentially we can apply, uh, let's say font family. Uh, you can find it like very, some very interesting font family on Google font. And you can also like just search it up on the internet. Um, you can also like download some very interesting font family, so yeah. And right now we are we are going to use a default one uh, that's going to be like on uh, basically like every computer it's Arial. Uh, how this uh, why is there like three font styles? Essentially, like this is saying that if there if there's no Arial font on this computer, you will use Helvetica. If there's no Helvetica, you will use the last font. So this is kind of like a safety uh, procedure that the um, browser can use just in case if the user doesn't have uh, some specific font on their computer. After, and after we hit refresh, we can see that the font styles changes. And if we look at the final result, it's actually still very different, right? You can see the title is actually very large. However, here it's like a little bit smaller. So we can select the dot title here and let's give it a size. Uh, let's say uh, I have to give it a size of 25 pixels just to like make it look larger. It essentially becomes larger. Cool. And you can see like the font weight is kind of different. So what's font weight? Font weight is essentially like uh, the thickness of a font. So you can see here, the H is definitely like thinner than this H here. So what we can do is essentially, uh, we can, uh, so first of all, we want to apply font weight to all, uh, all of the text just for like, make things prettier. And let's do font weight normal. After we do this, we can see like uh, all, the, all the fonts have the same weight, okay. However, like we can also see there's a small like margin here for why human computer interface the title. So let's add that as well. So for the dot title. Oh, actually, actually we can see that the margin uh, appears on all these uh, elements. So the learn more has a margin. The paragraph also has a margin. And the why computer human interface also has a margin. So essentially we can apply the same margin to all these elements uh, at the same time. And we can basically like save some uh, time writing the code out for each uh, element. So we can add it here. The margin for it is going to be 15 pixel. And if, if we hit, hit save, refresh, we can see that like right now, it's, it definitely looks much better than before. And all the text kind of like separate it out with each other. So yeah. Uh, if we notice, we actually can see like 
the learn more is actually like very near the bottom and there's like no margin here. And that's pretty weird. And why this happens is actually like margin will only influence uh, it's like neighboring tag. It will not influence this parent tag. So essentially it's saying that, that the learn more tag, because like there's nothing after the learn more tag is essentially the end of this div. So to apply essentially like kind of a margin before the learn more, uh, after the learn more tag and the end of the border, we can use a attribute called padding. And padding essentially is a way to add spaces around uh, an element. And we can add it in the card here. So let's add padding and let's give it like 20 pixels. If we hit refresh, we can see that there's a padding here and we can inspect it this way. So card, so this will be the margin. This will be the padding. So the padding is essentially like the thing that's inside the border and the margin is the thing that's outside the border. Okay. Actually, are there any questions up till this point? Let me check the chat. Uh, is the sorter code CSS one of the, yeah. <laughs> this may be a, <laughs> kind of like a delay answer, but yeah. Okay, cool. If there's not, if there isn't any question, let's continue. So let's look at actually if there, are there any differences still left? So we can see that the text here are actually kind of like glued together. Like the line space is a little bit too short. Because right now you can see here, the line is like separated with each other pretty, pretty nicely. But however here, the line is like not separating really well. So what we can do is to use an attribute called line, uh, called line height. And we can apply it to the dot description and also the dot link here. So let's do it. So we use the group selecting selector again and select the, select the dot link and dot description. And let's give it a line height of, let's say, uh, I don't know, 20 pixels. Let's try this out. <clears throat> okay, it looks, it looks okay. I feel like it's kind of like, it's still kind of like different. It probably has something to do with like font size. Let's see. Yeah, so we can see like in the final result, we have a font size of 14 pixel. So let's copy here and paste it here. Yeah, now it looks much nicer. So essentially like with a smaller font size and a large uh, line height, we can essentially like create very uh, nice looking text paragraphs. So like every line is kind of like separated with each other very nicely. So yeah. Let's see what difference are there still. Uh, you can see like some of our tools have grown to a point like this text is emphasized here. However, here's not. So let's do that. And the text here is being select can be selected by this ID attribute. And so this ID attribute, how do we select the ID attribute? It's essentially by using the hashtag uh, selector and then followed by the um, ID name. And it's called important description. So let's do that. So what attribute do we need? So we, first of all, we need to make it become bold. And then secondly, we need to add an uh, underline to it. So let's do that. So first of all, to let the text become bold, we use font, font weight and bold. We click save. And you can see that only the text here is being selected and it's become bold. And we can also add the uh, underline using text, uh, text decoration. Underline. Let's click slave, save. And so some of our tools have grown to a point where it blah, 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 blah. And it has an underline. So nice. And right now we can also see the learn more is actually um, pretty different on both of the cards. So one, one of them, if you hover on it, it will kind of like show a very different style and there are also like no underline here. 
However, right now, if we hover on it, like there's like no effect. So let's do that. And this is a pseudo selector that we uh, just talked about. So first of all, we can select dot link. And then, <clears throat> so the normal link, we want to like, first of all, we want to get rid of the underline. So let's use tag decoration none. By using text decoration none, it's essentially like making all the text decoration disappear. For example, the underline will just disappear. If we hit refresh, the underline disappears. Cool. And then the color is actually like a little bit different. So let's add a color. I think we can use the same color as our title. Kind of like this bluish color. So let's click save. Uh, let's click save. Yeah, and now it turns like this. And now let's we just need to add this hover effect. So actually, uh, point um, something to notice is that when you are using this inspection tool, the hover will actually not work very well. Uh, once one way you can do that is basically like by first of all inspect the link element, and then right click on the uh, HTML source code, and then for state dot hover. And then if you for state dot hover it will basically like force this uh, link to always be on the hover state. So essentially it's like simulating when the cursor is always on, it's always here. And this is a very uh, neat tool to use. Let's actually, uh, let's actually refresh it. Yeah, cool. Get rid of the force state. So let's actually um, build this uh, hover state for link. So to select the hover state, we use a pseudo selector called hover. And we want to kind of give it an underline. So let's use text decoration underline. And we can see now if we hover on the learn more, uh, uh, learn more element, an underline will be showing up. And if we look at the final result, actually the color will change a little bit. This is like, just a little bit better for the overall uh, user design and also the user experience. And we can change essentially like the color to be a little bit darker. This can be a pretty good color. Let's re uh, hit refresh. As then you can see the color will become like a little bit darker than before. So yeah, cool. Actually, let's look. I think we cover most, yeah, I think we cover everything. And there's also a very important thing called background color where we actually don't cover because like we didn't actually use it. But let's let's say we apply a background color here. And let's give it like black. And you can see the card well becomes black. So yeah, but we actually don't want that. So let's delete it. So cool. So I think this is for our um, CSS coding demo. Are there any questions? Let me look at the chat. Cool, okay. I will stop sharing the screen. And if there's no questions, uh, like the formal lecture will end it here. And uh, just, is there, are there any like general questions? If you want, you can ask me you now. Cause like, we kind of like end early, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, also if there's like not any questions, feel free to leave. I'm also going to stop the recording.